This is the lecture for module one for AP Macroeconomics. Please take notes in your notebook as you follow along. Remember that will be a grade. Um, if you have any questions or things that you are confused over, uh, make a note of it on the back of the notes section. And then when you come into class tomorrow, we can discuss that. All right, in this module, we're gonna talk about scarcity and choice uh, and how that's central to the study of economics. We're going to discuss the importance of opportunity costs and in individual choice and in decision making, the difference between positive and normative economics, when economists agree and sometimes why they disagree, uh, and what makes macroeconomics different from microeconomics. All right, so first we're going to talk about individual choice, which is the core of economics. All right, individual choice is the decision by an individual of what to do, which necessarily involves a decision of what not to do. The basic principles behind the individual choice are resources are scarce, the real cost of something is what you must give up in order to get it, how much is a decision at the margin, and people usually take advantages of opportunities to make themselves better off. Now, a resource is anything that can be used to produce something else. For example, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. Most resources fall within those four categories, and we're going to go into more detail on those in a later module. Uh, but more importantly, resources are scarce, meaning that the quantity available is not large enough to satisfy all productive uses. All right. Uh, this is, you know, we know that with fossil fuels and, and other resources, but, uh, you know, there's time limits in a day and things like that. Uh, all of that, you know, just shows the scarcity of resources, which is an important point to understand for economics. Now, this brings us to the concept of opportunity cost. Uh, opportunity cost is basically the real cost of something, all right? Uh, and the real cost of an item is its opportunity cost, which is what you must give up in order to get it. Uh, opportunity cost is crucial to understanding individual choice. Uh, now, the example that we're going to talk about is LeBron James. Now, LeBron James did not go to college. He went straight to the NBA where he could start earning money. All right. Uh, had he decided to go to college for a year or two, his opportunity cost of that decision would have been his rookie salary, which at the time was about $4.3 million, plus all of his endorsements, so his Nike shoe deal, which at the time was worth $100 million, uh, and other various uh, sponsorships by Sprite, Gatorade, right, other uh, companies, uh, which totaled about $25 million. So really his opportunity cost would have been just under $130 million had he decided to go to college. Because right, if you're a college athlete, you are not allowed to make any money. So uh, that kind of illustrates that opportunity cost. Now, that's an extreme example. Uh, a more common example might be you deciding to uh, go out with friends on a Friday night rather than working at your part-time job. All right, the cost is not only what you pay when you're out with friends at a movie or going out to eat, but it's also the lost income potential that you had uh, with from not working your part-time job. All right. Now, we're going to look at differences between micro and macroeconomics. Uh, so basically, uh, microeconomics is going to focus on small scale things that involve uh, individuals or specific businesses. Uh, macroeconomics is going to look at how the economy as a whole uh, operates. So a couple of examples of questions that you know maybe someone who's focused on microeconomics might, might ask is, should someone go to business school or take a job? Uh, and what determines the salary offered by Citibank to Sherry, a new Columbia MBA? So those are microeconomic questions because that just focuses on an individual or a specific business. Uh, a macroeconomic question uh, might be how many people are employed in the economy as a whole and what determines the overall salary levels paid to workers in a given year? So you notice how much larger scale those questions are. Now this class is macroeconomics, so that's going to be our focus. We're going to look at the economy as a whole. There are some more examples of questions that you can ask. Um, so uh, feel free to take a look at that. I'm not going to go over each and every one of those with you, but that just kind of illustrates more that point. And here's this for you to write down in your notes. 
So microeconomics focuses on how decisions are made by individuals and firms, which is another word for business, uh, and the consequences of those decisions. Macroeconomics focuses on the aggregate behavior of the economy. Uh, macroeconomics examines how the actions of all the individuals and firms in the economy interact to produce a particular level of economic performance as a whole. Basically, what's going on in the entire economy and how do changes by governments or businesses as a whole uh, impact the economy. All right. Now, with macroeconomics, it's important to understand that sometimes we're going to not look at in how certain decisions might impact individuals. We're going to look at the total economy, right? So when we talk about trade later on in, the, in this class, we're going to be discussing how it makes things more efficient. A problem might be that workers in specific industries might lose their jobs, but we're going to focus more on the bigger picture. All right. Now, positive versus normative economics. Uh, positive economics is the branch of economic analysis that describes the way that the economy actually works. All right, so positive, the way the economy actually works. Normative economics makes prescriptions about the, the way the economy should work. All right, so normative is more theory-based. Uh, you know, for example, if we cut taxes, that should grow the economy. Uh, positive economics would look at previous examples of tax cuts and see what actually ended up happening within the economy. All right. Now, when and why economists disagree, we're going to talk about this a little bit more in detail uh, in class, but there are two main reasons. Uh, number one, which simplifications to make in a model, and number two, values. Those are the big differences. In general, most economists agree on big picture items, but where they disagree is where to focus, all right, uh, whether it's in the short term or the long term, uh, or who to focus on within an economy. All right, those are the big differences that economists uh, have faced there. All right. Now, like I said, if you have any questions over this uh, module, uh, write them down on the back of your note sheet um, and bring those into class. We'll talk about any questions you have within the first five or ten minutes, depending upon how long it takes to answer those questions. Um, we will work on the worksheet. Uh, actually, uh, in class uh, tomorrow, um, so don't worry about doing that. Thank you for watching this lecture. Uh, bring your comments to class and we can discuss how this went.